Okay, welcome back. So, we will continue our discussion that we were doing in the previous uh, module in terms of uh, uh, composting technique. We were look, talking about the aerated static pile or before that we looked at the windrow. So, for aerated static pile you can uh, you can use it uh, uh, as I said you can use either positive pressure or negative pressure and it, things can get done in 3 to 5 weeks. So, in both the in uh, uh, compost uh, like a windrow composting we also the turner that I have been trying to explain this to you this is how it looks like. So, this will walk through the garbage pile and then it will uh, does the turning for us. So, this is how it will go there is a as you can see over here uh, from uh, this will go and keep on turning the garbage as uh, uh, like a for com composting process. So, this is again you can see the uh, it is a horizontal reactor. So, you put a cover on top and then you will have a turner coming in and do the turning from time to time. You can also have uh, if you can see very it is not very clear it is because of the black color uh, of the pipe, but if you can see over here there is a pipe uh, which is uh, essentially supplying the air or applying the vacuum you can see uh, on that. So, that is uh, right right there. So, this uh, you have this pipe as you can see over here that pipe is there. So, that pipe uh, kind of is for the air injection uh, going into the into the system. Mechanical or in vessel system where you have uh, it is a basically it is an industrial form of composting or a closed reactor vessel. So, you have the waste coming in. So, this is how the waste is loaded on top I oh, am sorry uh, waste is gets uh, loaded on top. So, that is where the waste is getting loaded and then we have different trays. So, it is uh, the system are generally uh, plug flow in an engineered vessel it is a plug flow reactor. So, the waste will uh, there will be aeration the air will be added and then it will keep on shaking and then it will get dumped over here then it will dumped over here. So, it kind of goes back and forth on this and then with lot of air being mixed to it and then finally, in 5 to 7 days uh, 5, 4 to 7 days you will have a uh, compost coming out at the bottom. So, it is uh, there here we have a better control of water content you can control the oxygen you can control temperature you can control the smell. So, those things are can be done uh, here. Uh, in a in vessel system. So, there is a benefit of doing that you save a lot of space as well, uh, but the curing uh, the curing requires longer time because uh, for that all those bacterial population to grow for those uh, it takes a longer time in this case. So, you, have, you require another 4 to 12 weeks of uh, uh, curing and uh, that is it is more expensive uh, due to mechanical configuration essentially you pay for the speed it. Uh, get, so, you are you can get done quicker. So, if you have a land issue you do not have that much of a land you can get something like this where you get the reaction done very quickly and then uh, that saves you uh, time. So, that is really and then you pay for the speed. So, if you are trying to save the time you will have to pay uh, for the speed because uh, otherwise uh, like uh, some money has to come from somewhere. So, this is another uh, picture of this is actually I think it was in uh, Germany where this is again a reactor where you have in, it takes 3 days for the waste to go from uh, uh, from the food waste to a compost kind of material and of course, you have to do a longer period of curing, but this reactor is uh, have the waste added to it and then what happens is this this keeps on uh, uh, this reactor keeps on rotating. So, it will rotate it uh, rotates it kind of uh, makes a circle and then uh, it uh, keeps on mixing the garbage and then the garbage is as it is move over a 3 day period from here to here. Uh, it uh, uh, or the other way from here to here and then uh, so it it, it takes uh, um, like a some it could starts degrading the garbage along the length and after 3 days you get a like a humus like material which you will see uh, from the picture over on this side and uh, so let us. So, you get some material like this and then you can cure it for a longer period of time to let get the bacterial population grow and all that. So, that is uh, how it is done as well. Then there are another agitated bin system where you have a bin where the agitator comes and then it goes uh, uh, like uh, again uh, agitates the. So, that is that is the picture right there. Uh, so, this is the agitator which uh, it will come and uh, and it will basically turn it. So, you see all those arms and twisted the arms. So, it helps in into mixing. So, that uh, was the mixing is done. So, it will go along the length of the trench and do the mixing and come back. So, that is uh, what you see over here. 
So, in terms of the smell, I said the smell is there. So, you apply you apply certain vacuum into, into the plant as well. So, you apply the vacuum on the plant when the plant is running and uh, that keeps uh, the smells a little bit under control and uh, you once you apply the vacuum, uh, the stuff that is collected through uh, from the vacuum is passed through certain biofilter. So, there are there will be we can we can install some biofilters on site where we let this gas pass through those biofilters before it gets released into the atmosphere. So, that is how that air pollution control system is can be controlled. So, that is here you can see this biofilter using a wood chips and we are using the wood chips to make the biofilter and the biofilter we are uh, uh, trying to use it for uh, uh, remediate for the uh, uh, this uh, removal of order removal of uh, bad smell material in uh, in the compost uh, process. So, other example is you can do backyard composting. Uh, usually, you can use a pre pre built container or series of wood bins. Uh, but again, you need to operate it well to minimize the order. You do not want to smell and you do not want any pests there. You usually for uh, in house uh, like backyard uh, compost, uh, it is advised not to have meat scraps. Uh, because it attracts pets, takes a long time to decompose. Uh, backyard shredder for fibrous material will help if you can put one or moisture and aeration are the two most important uh, control parameters. So, that is also you have to initial material and it is too dry, then you have to add some water and then turn the waste compost pile every 2 to 3 days for uh, good aeration and then slow allow for temperature rise. Uh, temperature can go up to 60 degree centigrade uh, to kill the pathogens. So, climatic condition composting will occur in summer. Uh, it can occur in winter as well because uh, we have seen that happening in winter. Uh, for ready weather, uh, keep it a surrounded compost pile to allow good drainage. So, we have to apply otherwise uh, you will have basically lots of leachate being produced and then maintain a good bug population that is very important. In addition to the microbes, you will find a wide variety of other organisms, fungi, nematodes, roundworms, mites, springtail centripetes. So, there are a lot of other kind of uh, bugs are there. So, we need to try to have a good population of these different types of bug and that helps into, into the composting process. So, uh, now if you have to design a compost plant, what are the things uh, we need to keep, keep into mind? If you think about uh, what, what we already discussed, uh, you, there should be a provision to handle the collection vehicle. So, these are again you look at from a very simple uh, logical way of uh, looking at it. So, you will have uh, you have the you are running a compost plant. So, you will have the trucks coming in bringing the garbage. So, there it should be a space where those trucks can be handled. So, you have to handle the collection vehicle. There could be surge amounts from time to time. So, because of any particular uh, festivals or something happened, you may have more waste being produced. So, you may have to use those uh, storage space uh, for that. And there could be some downtime of the plant where the plant has some maintenance issue cannot run. So, you may have maybe a week or 10 days of downtime. So, you need to keep those uh, 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 waste somewhere. So, you need basically a storage area. You need the storage area for the waste as well. Then materials should be processed at a uniform rate. Uh, so, you need to have a uniform rate. So, for that as well you have to that you need some storage capacity in the MRF so that we can uh, uh, put some of those recyclables and other things over there. So, has the inorganic uh, material been separated previously? So, that uh, we can uh, or is it separated by processing at facility? We can look that aspect and uh, how specific must the refuse be? Is flexibility allowed? Uh, just MSW from local urban areas, if other waste is being allowed, are there provisions for bulking agents? All those things are there uh, for uh, consideration. Now, major points uh, again, uh, again the, can the organic waste be added to the system, other organic waste? So, other than uh, food waste or agricultural um, like municipal waste waste, can we add this agricultural waste or wastewater treatment plant sludge? and see the how uh, the compost performance does it goes up or goes down. So, it will be a nice uh, thing to check. In the end uh, is the end uh, produce uh, free from pathogens and wheat. So, we have to look at the pathogen weeds. We have to have a quality assurance quality control that is very very important the QAQC control on the product uh, compost and then uh, our control measures in place for fly ash or order control like positive pressure hedgeback control can the facility store handle finished compost. Uh, we have to see that is it equipped uh, to distribute the compost to the end market. So, those uh, like a, a finished finish product end market. 
then market established for finished compost how many homeowners free compost days but homeowner how many how much compost they will take uh, and what they are doing with those compost those things also needs to be find out so it's uh, it's a you have to there is only a limited amount of uh, compost that a homeowners can take but uh, but there should be a commercial plan for compost as well commercial landscaping firm so they pay for compost and then there there could be a commercial uh, facility which is uh, which which will be interested in uh, in the compost uh, uh, product a specific design requirement so for the process design we we are focused on carbon nitrogen ratio and the moisture content for the process uh, that's the two thing we are carbon nitrogen ratio and moisture content then for the composting area sizing you need the mass density windrow length shrinkage and all that so if you want to have uh, that sizing over there then finished compost storage area sometimes for three months if we have to find out to where we can keep it that uh, so that's the finished compost storage area can be used for that then finished collection pond sizing so you have uh, so runoff collection runoff collection uh, from the pond you have to design the storm event because when you have a compost plant whatever is the runoff going through that also becomes part of uh, uh, your leachate so that needs to be treated so that's uh, a runoff collection has to be done for uh, for uh, doing for doing the uh, like a analysis or risk analysis of cloud uh, for landfill uh, leachate and all that so its land treatment design uh, for runoff we have hydraulic budget costing unit operation equipment personnel so all these different aspects many of these aspects are common to even in your structural engineering or geotechnical engineering and other parts of environmental engineering but some of them are a little bit unique in terms of carbon nitrogen ratio uh, working with uh, uh like a like biological or uh, bio uh, biotechnology people and to kind of uh, try to frame uh, this problem and to solve this problem so there is a it's it's a it, so these are the specific design requirements so uh, we have uh, i've tried to give you a, a overview of how things are done from uh from the compost plant perspective uh, what are the different components that goes into compost plant uh, compost plant so those things uh, have been presented in this uh, uh, particular uh, segment then now we will move to uh, the second uh, topic within this organic waste bio biological biodegradation waste in terms of the treatment side and the second uh, part is to look at the anaerobic digestion uh, composting is an aerobic process anaerobic digestion is an anaerobic process as the name suggests it's an anaerobic process so anaerobic treatment system we are essentially we are, uh, we are it's a, when uh, this anaerobic system we have two sets of bacteria one is methanogen one is non methanogen so what we need to do is we need to keep a good balance between methanogen activity and non methanogen activity so that actually helps uh, into this, there should be in a state of dynamic equilibrium because that helps uh, in our process so ideal condition for digestion uh, include ph of 6.5 to 7.5 uh, needs lots of alkalinity 1000 to 5000 milligrams per liter why we need lots of alkalinity because we are working with microbes we don't want too much fluctuation in the temperature uh, we want we want that uh, temperature to be more or less the same so that this microbes are happy and uh, keep on doing their work so needs uh, alkalinity around 1000 to 5000 uh, milligram per liter of cso3 uh, in terms of this uh, ph uh, uh, we want to alkalinity why because we, we don't want pH to go beyond uh, below 6.2 because if it goes below 6.2 that becomes a big headache in terms of uh, um, operation of this anaerobic digester and then methane bacteria cannot function below this point so you don't want uh, pH to be towards the acidic range uh, so we have zero oxygen uh, sufficient amount of nutrients are there need to be present so then we have optimal temperatures uh, mesophilic thermophilic temperatures are there like uh, and that's a 30 to 38 and thermophilic is 55 to 60 degrees so this is a, in terms of anaerobic digestion the ph alkalinity no oxygen sufficient amount of nutrient and then uh, you need to maintain certain temperature to do that so anaerobic again it could be batch system two stage single stage so batch system in a large footprint but low co ch4 pr production low tech system ideal for for developing countries many places in developing countries it is being used two stage system is the best uh, stage one is uh, provide homes for acidogen so you have two stage first stage is acidogenic uh, activity taking place in the second stage methanogenic activity taking place 
So, uh, stage 1 provides a home for acetogen, it is a good allows for good buffering. Then this constant feed stock goes to stage 2 where methanogens live. So, they are live in acetogens and methanogens they are living in different tanks. So, they do not uh, have to interact with each other and that is uh, it becomes actually better in terms of uh, managing the compost uh, process. So, you have a uh, acidogen uh, which uh, allows, uh, allows for good buffering and then you have the feedstock from stage 1 going to stage 2 where the methanogenic leave and they produce uh, methane gas. Then you have removal of solids from stage 2 to and uh, reduces gas formation. So, remove the solids, but high costs uh, cannot uh, be uh, run as a like can be run as a sludge system as well. So, you can uh, sludge system uh, to speed things up again things are expensive, but uh, those things can be done. In UK, the first step is the shredding of the organic waste. Then they operate at 37 degree centigrade to break down the large molecular weight organic material. Then operate at 70 degree centigrade to pasteurize, which is important for animal residue uh, plight. Uh, so that can be uh, used in uh, as a uh, fertilizer as well. So first stage one, 37 degree centigrade. We talked about that. Stage two, 70 degree centigrade. Uh, so you have from rather than 5,000 tons per year, you can go to 1,000 tons per year or 100 tons per year produces. Uh, uh, so, it should be actually 1000 tons per year, uh, you are producing around 880 tons of methane per year. So, residue applied to land as a fertilizer. So, you have uh, the residual that is coming up uh, that can be used as a fertilizer and then uh, we can, uh, so essentially what it is doing is uh, you have uh, in the UK what they do, they have the waste coming in, they shred the organic material, they have one stage. 37 degree centigrade, break down the large molecules uh, to a mo molecular weight to organic material. Then you have the second stage at 70 degree centigrade where it helps in pasteurization as well. It will kill all those bacteria that we had on the list and which is important for the animal waste. I remember the mad cow disease and other stuff. Then you have uh, around 5000 tons per year uh, is being processed, around 100 dollar per ton is the cost, produces 880 tons of uh, methane per year and that methane can be used as a as an energy source and the residue can be applied as a fertilizer. So, that is how uh, anaerobic system is working uh, in, uh, in UK. So, Europe has done a lot of work on this over the last 25 years, a lot of new technologies have come up in Europe uh, on uh, anaerobic digestion uh, lot over the last 25 years. Uh, they have a 4 million tons capacity, operating costs are high, low environmental impact than straight landfilling of course, generates a useful fuel, methane is generated. So, you can use to run buses, you can generate electricity from that. So, so there is a project now methane to electricity. India and Thailand also have thousands, uh, thousands of a small scale facility for low cost energy, it reduces cost associated with transportation of MSW and compost. So, you can have a small system where you can uh, uh, have this anaerobic digestion uh, uh, going on, which uh, like our Gober gas plant and other stuff, it all uh, basic, basically they are anaerobic digester. But there are other application in agriculture like manure and crop residue, those can be in food waste, bioremediation, compo com composting of contaminated soil. So, all these uh, uh, are part of uh, anaerobic, like somehow related to anaerobic digestion, some form or another in terms of uh, uh, the basic principle. So, that is on that part. Then in terms of uh, anaerobic digestion what happens? In a very simplified form in terms of anaerobic digestion you are having four steps. The first one is your hydrolyzing bacteria. So, the bacteria is getting hydrolyzed, bacteria is getting accumulated to the system and it gets hydrolysis, hydrolysis happens. With the hydrolysis uh, the next step is of course, the formation of acidogens or acidogenic bacteria. We start seeing VFAs, uh, acetic acid, foranic, uh, all those acids being uh, uh, formed. So, that goes in acid acidogenic bacteria. Uh, then uh, when you have this uh, uh, like uh, this VFA is being formed volatile fatty acids, this VFA gets converted to acetic acid by this acidogen acetogenic bacteria. So, the first one is the hydrolyzed hydrolyzing bacteria to do the hydrolysis. Uh, then you have the acidogenic bacteria which produces acids, but uh, high molecular weight acids. Then that get converted to low molecular weight acid and then you have the aceto acetogenic bacteria which is producing the acetic acid. Now, then we have methanogenic bacteria which will go from uh, acetic acid to methane gas. So, that is the, the typical way the landfill gas uh, uh, gets produced. So, you have uh, 
you have from acetic acid things will go to uh, methane gas. So, how it is working? So, first step hydrolyzing bacteria and in the second step uh, do after hydrolysis, hydrolyzing of the bacteria this, uh, uh, this bacteria starts acting on, uh, on the organic material present and they start, they start producing uh, acidogenic uh, acids uh, like VFA volatile fatty acids and all big molecular weight acids. And to handle those acids we have the acidogenic bacteria. And this acidogenic bacteria will convert that uh, to a smaller molecular weight acids and then acetogenic bacteria will convert everything to acetic acid and from acetic acid methanogens will convert that to methane gas. So, this is how uh, system uh, works in terms of uh, and then we have to have different tanks and all those kind of stuff to do that. So, in terms of the methane production uh, percentage of CH4 and methane produced from 100 kg of MSW. So, if you have 78. Uh, so, in this case if you have uh, like a how much methane how much CO2 will be produced. So, this is the from the anaerobic uh, degradation equation uh, these are the values coming from the anaerobic degradation equation it is 4 plus a plus b minus 2 C upon 3 d. So, 1 mole of uh, 1 mole of this MSW will produce how much mole of CH4 and how much mole of CO2 and we found out that it will be 32 moles of CH4 and 32 28 moles of CO2. So, and the waste to be decomposed is uh, 78 percent organic matter. So, it is 100 uh, times 0 0.78, so 78 kg and then uh, the assuming the sufficient water is present. So, we do the math in the same way mass of molar dry solids, then uh, how much methane will be there, how much CO2 will be there, then the other thing is that you look at uh, uh, mass of uh, uh, like a methane, CO2, ammonia, carbon dioxide and all those things uh, you get those numbers and then uh, you try to compare that number and try to have that number in terms of uh, getting into uh, what what's what we known as uh, uh, like a how how much it will be so for uh, uh, number of moles that is present because here these numbers are for one mole so one mole of uh, uh, one mole of uh, with the waste when is degrading producing 32 moles of uh, CH4 and CO2 for this particular uh, equation for this particular waste. But uh, uh, like waste to be decomposed is 78 grams and we know the molecular weight of this we can calculate. So, we can find out number of moles, number of uh, moles for uh, this particular waste that is present and once we know the number of moles we can uh, always uh, multiply that with this because one mole will produce this and one mole will will produce this much. So, if you have say 4 moles or 5 moles you multiply it by 4 multiplied by 5 likewise and then you get your uh, answer uh, for that. So, mass of waste component how will you uh, like an example methane production. So, mass of waste weight component uh, you mass of dry solids uh, we had uh, 78 kg 75 percent. So, this is the dry solids uh, which is present and from dry solids it says the molar mass of methane and CO2. So, we can uh, you can convert that like uh, how much for 1 mole of oxygen how much mole of uh, methane uh, is required or how much mole of methane is produced. So, in this uh, case actually uh, it will be uh, methane will be produced and the ox even uh, oxygen is not supplied here it is an anaerobic process. So, it is the methane and CO2 both will be produced. So, if a molar mass is 32 and 28 so, multiplied by that we kind of uh, get the weight of each one of them molar mass of MSW we can find out we know the equation. So, we can find out how much what is the molar mass of MSW then we can find out what is the mass of methane mass of CO2 that is based on how much is the uh, weight coming in uh, in terms of uh, 58.5 kg uh, we that uh, total uh, moles of this multiplied by in terms of uh, how much grams and then same thing with the gram. So, you get uh, mass of CH4 mass of CO2 then from mass we can convert that to volume using the density and all those uh, different factors associated with that. So, this is how uh, you can calculate for how much methane will be produced. Again as in the previous uh, course uh, in the composting one we have talked about uh, uh, oxygen being supplied that is important here the methane production is important because if you want to do a land uh, this anaerobic digester to energy project if you want to produce energy out of that you need to have uh, you need to have an idea of how much methane will be produced. So, to the total gas produced in terms of the volume is this much and that comes to methane is around 53.4 percent 
and uh, CO2 is 46.4%. Uh, so we have 53.4 and 46.4% of there. And methane produced, if you convert that to uh, meter cube per kg, so you have 0.29 meter cube per kilogram of the waste. That is how much uh, methane was produced from that uh, uh, for the waste stream. So that is the methane produced per 100 kg of the solid waste. So that is an uh, uh, example of how much methane is uh, getting produced. So let us uh, look at, uh, yeah, so we did that. Yeah, we did this part, we did this part, we did this. Now we will go to this chapter. So where we have another biological treatment example. So we will go through another uh, math problem. So here uh, we have two waste stream, uh, chicken manure and yard waste. For both uh, we have been given uh, the data. So for the chicken manure the data has been provided, for the yard waste also data has been provided. So for chicken manure we have 10 tons per month, yard waste is 20 tons per month, moisture content is there. Uh, for both volatile solid is provided to us. Then we have lignin content in one and we have VVS uh, in the other which is 68 to 76. So we can take the average of those two numbers kind of in the middle. So if you in terms of this particular example, if we try to do it uh, step by step, here uh, BVS we can calculate if the lignin content is known, we can calculate BVS using this equation where BVS is equal to 0 0.083 minus 0 0.028 times LC. LC is the lignin content expressed in percentage. So here the lignin content is 6 percent. So we can plug those numbers and we get BVS as 66.2 percent or 0.662. So that is uh, here we had uh, BVS as 72 percent and this the other one is 66.2 percent. So that is uh, uh, how uh, the BVS numbers uh, you get. Uh, you can get it from lignin content. You can also measure it directly using a, a bomb colorimeter and all that uh, like what is the not uh, yeah how much uh, waste will uh, uh, like in terms of BVS fraction how much waste uh, you will degrade so we can find out uh, from uh, so again looking at the composition of waste we have this BVS fraction which is going to react so uh, not the other fraction it's a BVS uh, fraction which is going to react so this is the fraction which is going to react so we have to have this formula for those functions and then use our common uh, uh, like equations not that difficult. So how many dry tons uh, it says the first question is how many tons of dry compost will be produced. So we have these two waste stream yard waste and chicken manure they have certain moisture content there will be certain react BVS content. So assuming that uh, the entire BVS uh, like 100 percent efficiency of conversion we can calculate dry tons of chicken manure compost per month. So we have 10 wet tons uh, 40 percent is the moisture content. 0.75 percent is the VS and out of that 0.72 percent is the BVS. So we can find out what is the amount of BVS present and that amount of BVS is what is going to be uh, will be reacting into the system. We should not use the like I have used the, the word destroyed, destroyed uh, it is basically just to grab your attention. It is uh, basically 3.24 tons of uh, chicken manure will get uh, uh, decompose they will react uh, uh, and then will get, will get decomposed. So this is not the compost produced but rather than what is biodegraded in the process. So that is what uh, we have uh, uh, from chicken manure. So from chicken manure in terms of if uh, for 3.24 tons of chicken manure is uh, it, it is there uh, that is what uh, it uh, it's, uh, what is uh, sorry 3.24 tons will, will react and uh, will get converted to compost. Uh, uh, so we will we'll actually will get uh, out of the system uh, as part of uh, the reaction. So we have this uh, this wet ton so amount of this is the total amount of dry ton present. This is the dry ton which will uh, react and go out of the system in the form of gas and other stuff. So the remaining will be your uh, uh, dry uh, chicken manure compost material. So it's around 2.76 tons of uh, dry chicken manure. Uh, yard waste similarly you can do the yard waste calculation you get 7 tons of dry yard waste compost. So if you add them up you get 9.76 tons of dry compost produced uh, per month uh, from that facility. So the other is uh, uh, other question is how many standard cubic meters of air are required to establish a year worth of compost. So stabilization means 100 percent of BVS getting converted to CO2 and water. So then air has 79 percent or nitrogen, 21 percent oxygen. It is only oxygen that is participating. So we have to determine the oxygen, how we do it. We can measure it. We can do some samples in the lab and we can get the data from there. 
So, in terms of aerobic decomposition, we have looked at this earlier where CO2 is produced. So, this if you know the formula, you know how much oxygen is required, you can know how much CO2 is produced. And uh, for so, this is a simple format. So, where you have uh, uh, the simple uh, organic uh, material with oxygen, it is produced in 6 CO2 and 5 water. So, what we need to get information is we need to get information regarding the composition of the waste and then which part of the waste? It is the BVS part of the waste that is what we need to get the composition. We can do measure, we can measure it, but that is costly, it uh, requires money to measure that or we can find a reference in the literature, two ways you can encounter the data, you can have percentage carbon, hydrogen, oxygen or you can get the formula directly. So, either way you can get the data and use it uh, in, your, uh, in your problem. So, air requirement for the yard waste uh, reference in the compost bag, uh, yard waste we found some uh, uh, formula. So, we can, we can go ahead and use the same formula if, we, if the time and money is resource uh, is limited. So, here uh, it is essentially carbon, hydrogen, oxygen which is contributing to the air demand uh, and nitrogen it is not contributing. Let us assume that uh, it, it does contribute to mass of BVS, but does not contribute to the air demand. And then uh, the formula is representative of the BVS. So, that is the formula which is out there. So, if you have this formula in terms of how much moles of oxygen will be required for one mole of this to produce uh, methane uh, produce CO2. So, if you plug in those numbers you get 28.5 kg mole of oxygen per kg mole of uh, this particular uh, waste material that is what is needed. So, and then how do we get the air requirement? If you know the how much kg mole of oxygen is required, we can convert that in uh, volume and then we can use that number. So, one good thing uh, which uh, you can also remember that is 22.4 standard meter cube of perfect gas is equal to per kg mole or 22.4 liters is equal to 1 gram mole. So, that is uh, based on that you can do the conversion as well. So, you had 28.5 uh, kg mole of oxygen required per kg mole of uh, the material that we talked about earlier. So, this is uh, uh, what we had uh, in terms of uh, the calculation we did. Now, uh, per k 1 kg mole has 22.4 uh, meter cube of oxygen. So, you convert that. So, you get uh, 638 meter cube of oxygen per kg mole of this. So, this is uh, oxygen. What we will be supplying is air. So, if you want to convert that to air, so 100 meter cube of air per 21 meter cube of oxygen. So, based on that you can get what is the air requirement. So, this is how uh, it is done. So, you can uh, convert uh, things for the BVS. So, this much air is required per kg mole. Now, what is the how much kg mole of uh, this per molecular weight? So, you can calculate the molecular weight of this particular uh, uh, com like compound. So, if you do the math uh, the for the molecular weight, you get around 632 uh, kg of this per kg mole of that. So, once we figure factor this number here, so this much meter cube of air per kg mole. 1 kg mole is this much kg. So, when we factor that one in, so we get 4.81 meter cube of air per kg. And then we had 1000 kg of uh, uh, coming per because we were working with 1 ton. So, we get around 4810 meter cube of air. So, that is a uh, meter cube of air that is required uh, for uh, 1 ton of yard waste. So, this is uh, how you get your uh, air requirement. And, uh, there is another, uh, we, we, we are done with the halfway. Let us uh, kind of uh, for the interest of time, we need to I think stop here and then this chicken manure we will do in the next uh, video and then we will do the summarize it in the next video as we make progress. So, what we have covered in this module, we looked at some of the anaerobic digestion issues initially and then uh, we again uh, got into doing some problems for compost. So, uh, we'll, we are doing some composting problem, we will continue this, this is a bigger, this is actually a big problem on composting. We will continue this problem in the next video. I do not want to rush it through because there are some important concepts that I wanted to cover. Uh, I want, uh, but you go ahead uh, uh, like uh, if, if you have this material available in the PDF format, go ahead and look at it. So, that uh, you can um, uh, as a reading material, you may already have this PDF. So, go ahead and look that. And, uh, you can look at look through the problem. So, the next time when you see the video, you have already gone through it once. So, let us uh, stop here. Uh, this is uh, this is the second video of week 7. So, we will uh, continue the discussion. So, once we finish this biological treatment, we will uh, go into the thermal treatment and maybe in so maybe a video, video or half later, we will start talking about the thermal. So, with this, let us uh, conclude this video and I will see you again in the next video. Thank you.